Well, Kalani, uh, just you've been at it for about a week now. I just wondered if you could give us an update on the quarterback race, if there's been any separation, how each of the three have looked, and just anything you can tell us on how that battle's going. Uh, as far as separation goes, uh, not um, highly visible right now, other than all three are much better than they were in spring, and they improve every day. So it's, it's getting a little bit more difficult. But uh, it's really no fault of theirs. They're, they're just stepping up and making some big plays. And um, I, I anticipate uh, some separation soon, especially when we start doing a lot more 11 on 11 work. And uh, that, that'll probably happen in the next uh, week, week and a half or so. That as a follow up, when the decision is made, will, will it be A Rod making the decision and going to you with it for approval? Or how will that kind of unfold? Yeah, mostly A Rod and and Fessy, and then um, you know I, we we communicate a lot, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll be be in it all together. But um, I'm going to lean heavily on the guys that spend the most time with them, and that's uh, those two. And, and and obviously A Rod's the offensive coordinator, so and and the quarterbacks coach. So it's it's uh, heavy. The the heavy part of it will be his his to, to decide. Blani, the first. The first five offensive practices, A-Rod said, were, were scripted. What's what's the next phase for the offense now that those five practices are in the rearview mirror? Is it more of a game-like situation for the for the offense? Exactly. Yeah, that, that's the goal is to get them used to just football, situational football, and that that that's uh, not something that you script. You, and it's also good work for our, our uh, communication from the, the play caller, A-Rod, all the way to the to the signalers, to the guys that can get lined up. So um, now we're trying to figure out uh, how, to, how to get in the flow of a game, who can lead um, the team down the field and then score points. And that's going to be the key in the next little bit. Right now, we, we were just trying to, in the first little bit, trying to establish a foundation of guys knowing the plays, knowing their assignments, how their alignments are supposed to be and the technique that they need to utilize. And then uh, now it's putting it all together and having it be uh, different times and not having to be so scripted. Now, this, it, before it was, the scripts were all situational. Now we're just going to go with the flow and, and go with the, with the plays. And that's going to be, I think, key for, for those quarterbacks um, evolving and progressing to the, the type of players that we want them to be leading the way against Arizona. And you noted earlier in camp that you'd love to have 123 starter type players in the program. But in reality, how many starters that you feel confident right now that could play in a moment's notice in your program at the moment? You know, I haven't ca counted them all up, and I, I know I said that last time I talked to you guys, that we have more than 11 on each side. I, I really believe we do. Um, I just have to go up and count how many guys we feel comfortable as a coaching staff being being one of the starters. I, I really believe that um, that's my job as a head coach is to get the depth ready and get the whole team ready to start and play for us, uh, regardless of, of um, you know, what type of team we have. I, I think my goal is to get all the guys in a position where they should be able to get on the field and help us win games. And so is it is it achievable? I don't know, but we're going to try to do our best. And I don't know the, the exact number right now, but I know we have a good number of them. And there's a lot of guys that, that can change day to day right now. There's a lot of guys that made huge improvements from last week to now. And then if you can do that in, in five practices, imagine what can happen in the next five. Hey, Norma, go ahead. Hey, Kalani, so just looking based off of uh, what you guys had of us in regards to the talent coming back, um, it seems like the offense is much um, stronger than the defense because they are fairly young and the offense just has incredible depth and across the board in multiple positions. Would you say that's the case? And if so, how do you get the defense to sort of start rising up to the occasion? Well, I think we have certain defensive guys that, that have a lot more experience than people – I uh, can remember for some reason a lot of people don't remember all the the reps and the snaps that our corners and, and our linebackers had you know and, and I think we have a lot of young guys in terms of of roster years and but uh, they, they still have some good valuable experience and that's the key is that everybody learns at their own pace so we just need to hurry it up a little bit and um, it's not not a very patient world when you're dealing with with coaches but um, we ha we have to utilize all the time, and so the next little to answer your question, um, we have to ramp it up a little bit more. And sometimes um, you 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 drown them with with so much um, install 
that it's hard for players to, to really play because they're and let loose because they're thinking so much and um, really we can't slow down um, we can't slow down the pace that we're trying to go at because we're, we're looking at the pace of getting ready for Arizona and it's it's really up to the players to, to match the pace and the tempo that we're going as far as learning the scheme and learning the system and then being ready to play right now when you have a lot of guys that can ro- you can roll with um, we have to go quickly and we, we have a goal to get to a standard a certain standard that we have to meet but um, eventually in about a week or so we can rally those other guys back and do a little bit more specialized but right now we're trying to get as much install in and much film in before we start figuring out what we're really good at and what we can do where we f- feel can give us an advantage against Arizona. So would you say that the offense is more dominant uh, right now as of where you are right now in Paul Camp? It's hard to judge that when you're not really playing full football when you're just doing like scripted reps and things like that it's it's difficult to say that. I, I, I know that there's times that practice looks really ugly, and I'm okay with that because that means that we're trying to work through practice, trying to get in a situation where guys get better and guys may take chances and be a little aggressive on both sides of the ball. And then there's times where we're going to have to play 11-on-11 11 11 football where nothing's scripted, and that's where we're going to start seeing um, you know, who's who's got the upper hand here. And so... We're going to start doing that this this later part of this week and looking at the next three practices doing that, and then we'll see what happens. And that's that's probably where you're going to get some separation in a lot of positions, including the quarterback. But uh, right now it's hard for me to say that when everything's been really scripted reps and um, one-on-ones, and so it's, it's not real football when you're looking at, at the, entire, in the, in the entire process of what we're trying to do in practices. How are you feeling, by the way, Norma? Norma, are you feeling okay? Yeah, yesterday I was still kind of recovering and had another little tachycardia issue where I got really fatigued and my heart was racing, but pretty, pretty good. Good to hear. Hopefully all the smoke gets out of the way so we can get back to real life football, having you guys around. Although I'm getting used to this, I don't know why. This seems almost normal now. Glad you're doing better, Norma. Glad you're doing better, Norma. Uh, Greg, go ahead. You're up next. And then anyone else, if you have questions, go ahead and raise your hand in the chat or in the on Zoom. Hey, Kalani. Uh, Brett may actually have a better number or an updated number. Uh, I was just tracking this yesterday and came up with 17 players on your roster that have fathers who played at BYU. Uh, what's the value of legacy guys in your program? Sons of fathers, many of the fathers you know played with, of having that kind of chain kind of continue to, to, to link up over time. Yeah, I mean, I, I I never counted that up, Greg, but that's I think it's a cool thing. I wonder how many have had um, grandfathers or family members that have played here. Um, I, I think having legacy kids is, is a big part of, of um, what we're trying to accomplish here is that those guys that have been raised BYU, um, you know, there's not a lot of new things when you're recruiting, not a lot of things that they don't already know about, especially when it, in terms of culture and especially those guys that played for Lavelle, they know that I'm trying to run a similar system. So um, uh, we get to know them and get to see that they fit our program perfectly. And I think they're, they're for what we're trying to promote from the school mission and our team mission, it seems like an easy transition. So um, it, it, I don't want to be just limited to that. Also, I just want to make sure that we're open to recruit the best kids out there. And there's just a, a high number of them happen to be sons of, of you know, former BYU players. Thanks. All right. Um, does anyone else have a question they still have for Kalani? I've got another one, if that's okay. Go ahead, Jay. Kalani, a couple of people have mentioned that Pepe Tanavasa has really taken well to this new kind of rush end position. Uh, so first, would you agree with that? And in what way has he kind of taken well to it? And then also, how has Preston Hadley done as moving and coaching directly the defensive ends and, and so far, has that move kind of paid off for you? Yeah, I think I'll ask, answer the Preston one first. Preston's done an amazing job. Uh, he's just a ball coach, so, so it doesn't really matter what position you give him. He's going to flourish in it. But I'm really excited about the unique perspective he has uh, of, of the, uh, the front, especially the DNs and that, of those hybrids, uh, being aware of what's happening in the coverage. And so uh, I think uh, just giving that perspective, perspective is, is unique. But, um, you know, 
you look at Preston, Preston's a, st a student of the game, so he's going to learn as much as he can and, and do his homework and do his research and get, get our guys to kind of fit. He looks at our personnel group and looks at our, our players and tries to find the best place for those guys to flourish and talks to Ituyaki about getting a system and, and, and putting them in a scheme that would work. Um, Pepe was kind of a tweener where, where we were trying to make him a linebacker and trying to make him a, a, a DN, and he was kind of didn't fit the system. So uh, I, I give a lot of credit to Tuyaki and to Coach Hadley and Lamb and, and Guilford and Kloon for devising a plan where those guys can actually have a role and then having the opportunity to have Preston be able to coach those guys up as well as the, 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 hand, the guys that put their hands on the ground as DN. So uh, I think having an extra coach uh, do the DNs is going to be huge for us. It allows E. Tuyaki to do more things as a coordinator and turn over the D-line even to, to Preston and, and the graduate assistant. So it's been, it's been really nice. I like the perspective that he has in the, in the game. And um, a lot of us, if you look at this coaching staff, have coached other positions. I've coached every position other than quarterbacks, you know. So um, if you're a ball coach, you should be able to coach any side of the ball, any position, as long as you know the, the basics and the, the technique to, that you're trying to, you know, have your players do. But in answer to Pepe, Pepe is an amazing talent. And we just want to, we just feel like he, there's a, a scheme where he can really do well, and that's, kind of devising that plan where he can play. I think we call, this is Jack and a different position, Jack OE position where he can be a stand up. He can be hands on the ground if we need him, but he can do a lot of different things. And it's utilizing his skill set rather than making him lose weight and change the way that he does things or gain weight and be a down hand on the ground type of the end. I, I think devising a scheme and a personnel set where guys like him have a home. And that's a big part of that is having Preston there. All right, Jason. Go ahead, and then um, Mitch, you can have a follow-up after that. Kalani, first and foremost, uh, fantastic wardrobe choice today. Uh, really <laughs> liking what you're wearing there. Uh, as soon as I'm wearing the same thing. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the running backs, and, and specifically the guys behind Tyler and Lopini. How are those guys behind those two looking? Well, that, that, we're going to have to see how those guys handle themselves in live work. You know, it's uh, right now they're they're learning the plays and they're getting things down and then they're they're doing really really good when it's it's not live. I mean, but that's once we get things and get tackling and get things going eleven on eleven, I think we'll be able to see who can really handle it. I, I have a good feeling that all of them can do it. Um, it just they just happen to be ha be behind two really really solid running backs. But uh, I really like that group a lot, and we'll see how. They improve when we get live and start doing things and keeping them healthy is going to be a key, but, but we've got to test them uh, in, in live situations. That's coming up real soon. Speaking of Tyler, coming off just a fantastic year, and Lopini had a good year too, but specifically for Tyler, coming off the year he had, what areas are there still room for improvement for him? Oh, there's tons. Yeah, there's. I mean, you're looking at perfecting his game. It's, it, there's, there's a few plays that he wishes he could improve on, and uh, and then there's also opportunity to get better at blocking, catching the ball. All those things matter. But what I really want him to do is, is step up and become the leader that we, we started to see already since the end of the season, him being a vocal leader. And that's not his deal, but he's getting out of his comfort zone. He's learning how to become a leader. And the players are really taking, take, they're just really taking to him as, as a leader. They, they love following him. And, and it's, it's not really that difficult when, when you're a guy that just does everything right and works extremely hard. So uh, we just need him to keep mentoring these young guys along and, and being uh, one of the main leaders on our team. And, and so far, he's doing a good job. Thanks, Coach. Kalani, I wanted to ask you about the uh, newcomers that uh, joined the cornerback room and Jacob Robinson and Caleb Hayes. Maybe uh, what type of uh, impact have they brought to the, to the competitive depth in that uh, cornerback room that already appeared to be pretty deep? What is uh, Hayes and Robinson brought to that room? Oh, yeah. I mean, they got size and speed, um, exactly what we're looking for. Uh, they have a lot of talent. And so, uh, you know, adding adding to our depth and our talent, that's huge for us. But I, I really feel good with what Gennaro's done with that group, man. He, it's, a, it's a solid corner group, and we just got to keep testing them. And so... Uh, yeah, I think there's a there's a chance that we'll see a, a, a lineup with a lot of different corners co uh, contributing to our success on defense, and 
it just helps out having having guys that are, that are here that are all pretty much game ready and then we just teach them our, our, our system and the way they go but so far from what I see and they have the talent individually to, to really be something special here for us.